welcome back. We have another challenge here. This one's called Sort Binary Tree by Levels. You are given a binary tree and they give us, they implemented this node class for us. It's very simple. The idea of a node, it's got a left child and a right child. It only has the possibility to have two children because note that it's a binary tree, which is the most common in computer science. That's usually what you're going to deal with. But note that's why we only have a left and a right value. So you can imagine a sort of pyramid scheme and we'll look at some diagrams, but imagine a node at each level can have uh, two children branching off, one to the left, one to the right. And then it has some data associated with it, this value, which will just be a simple integer in this case. You certainly could have more complicated nodes though, and you can pack any kind of data you would like in a node. And then to make these, they just show us how they did their constructor. You provide the nodes and a value. Uh, but this is all done for us. You'll note over in the coding section that they just give us a node, which represents the root, and we run from there. But this is helpful so we know how to access the properties, and get the information that we want. Anyway, your task is to return the list with elements from tree sorted by levels, which means the root element goes first then root children from left to right, or second and third, and so on. Return empty list if root is null. Example one, so the example will help clear this up. Consider this tree structure, you know, you got two, this would be the root, and it's got a left child and a right child, and then each of these at the second level has an opportunity to have children, and it has a left and a right, and nine has a left and a right. So, from those instructions, this is the expected ordering of the list that they want to see back from us. Notice the function returns a list here. It's kind of shown as an array, but you get the idea. Start at the first level, grab it, go down a level, start from the left and go to right, sort of as we read. So you get the two, the top level, second level is eight and nine, then go to the third level, go from left to right, you get this one, three, four, five. So that's what's going on there. They give us another example to be sure that we understand. One is the root this time, so it's the first element. It's at the highest level. You go down a level, you get the eight, four. You go down a level, you get the three, five. And then finally, at the fourth level there, you get this seven at the end. This example's nice because it shows that you may not have a child either to the left or to the right. In this case, notice there's not a left child of eight and there's not one for five or four either. So when we're processing, we'll wanna be on the lookout for that, be able to handle that. So I think that's enough information to proceed. Uh, do know that there is a name for this kind of uh, processing. This would be called a breadth first search as opposed to a depth first search. Breadth, you're sort of uh, stepping out one node away at a time, you know, the distance from whatever. If you're starting here, you can kind of think of it as moving one step out. All the different ways, you know, in this case, it's a binary tree, so there are only two, but imagine a big graph, right? You could have lots of edges leaving a vertex. It could be more than two. And so with breadth first, you're sort of taking one step out at a time. And then once you've examined every first step out, then you can move on to that next range. Oh, excuse me, my phone's phone alarm is going off. I'll get rid of that. Okay. So yeah, let's do a breath first search. And uh, to show you how this works, there's a really good wiki article about breadth first search that I recommend you read it. It's got some nice diagrams here. They call it BFS for short. It's an algorithm for traversing or searching tree or graph data structures. It starts at the tree root and explores all of the neighbor nodes at the present depth prior to moving on to nodes at the next depth level. So that's a nice way of saying what I just said in a different way. And then I did mention there's another idea of going depth first. Notice how it sort of snakes down. You can see the numbers in each of the nodes. It goes straight all the way to the left and all the way down. So that's a different way of processing a graph or a tree, but that's not how we want to do it for our problem. This diagram 
shows exactly what we want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Proceeding from the top to bottom, reading from left to right. That's what we're going for. And that's what's here. And so there's a cool thing here. They've got some pseudocode for us, which, you know, probably looks pretty worthless. You know, it's quasi computer code here, but this is actually the answer. I mean, we'll change it a little bit for our purposes, but I can pretty much rip this. And that's what's nice about pseudocode is that I'm going to be coding in C sharp here. But if we were doing this in Java or some other language, it's something where you're familiar with the syntax, you can easily adapt this to any language. And so it is actually very useful. So let's go ahead and do an implementation of this. We won't sort of uh, reinvent the wheel. This is a common item in computer science. If you went to study it at a university, you're no doubt going to talk about this algorithm. So it's definitely one to know. I recommend going through the rest of the document and reading it. It's a good read. Otherwise, we'll get into implementing this in C sharp and tweaking as necessary. So to start, we don't need our motivational comment. It's very nice, but we don't need it. It's clutter, right? So let's start off. First things first, they want a list of integers back. I'll call mine result. You can name yours however you like. I often use that name result for the return, whatever I'm returning. And we know that for list, we are not covered by the system. We have to call or bring in system collections generic. We use list a lot. That's, that's nothing new. And if you remember in the instructions, there was one catch. If node is null, they wanted us to return this empty list. And we have that at this point. It's just an empty list. So I'm going to say if node, let's do it like this. If it's not equal to null, we'll do that processing, right? And then otherwise, we'll just say, or I should say either way, this is going to happen regardless. Return the result. If the node is null, it'll skip this whole block and simply return this um, empty list. Otherwise, in this section, we'll sort of populate result and we won't, same thing, we want to return it anyway. It just won't be empty, right? So that covers that little catch there where node is null, the root is null. So let's get back to it. We notice that they're going to introduce the queue data structure. I can't recall if we've done that. I'm coming back after a hiatus here. I'm not sure if we've used queues yet or not, but they're very simple data structures. They're called first in, first out. You can see that in this article here. There's a link to a queue, very common, very useful data structure. And the classical way of describing it is just think of like a line at the bank, right? We all line up. Whoever was there first gets served next. You know, there's no cutting in line and you process things that way. It's the same at the supermarket, right? You get in line and you wait and each person's processed in turn and then they leave after they've been checked out. So we're going to have one of those and we're not going to bother with this discovered thing. But basically you start by just throwing the root node, the only node we have to start in the queue. And then we're going to go into this while loop. And then while the, the queue is not empty, we're going to process. You can imagine in our case, what processing means. It means getting that integer value, right? And adding it to that result list that we made. That's, a, that's all we have to do for processing here. So it's going to be simple. And then, so you're pulling the next node from the queue, right? We put the root in. So imagine the first time going through, we're just going to take it right off the queue and it, we just have that one node. And then we're going to sort of grab that node's value, add it to the list. And then the important part, we're going to check if it has children. We're going to start with the left side because they wanted us to process from left to right. If it's not null, we're going to add it to this queue and we're going to do the same thing for the right side. If it's not null, add it to the queue. And then you can imagine once we dequeued right here, this pulled that first node out of the queue. 
so the queue's empty, right? And then we check for children and we possibly add one or more one or two children. And so the next time you come up for the next iteration of the while loop, if children were present, queue's not going to be empty anymore, right? There'll be one or two items in there. So you go in there and now you're getting the level two nodes, right? And you're gonna dequeue them and, and do the same thing. Check if they have children. And so it's gonna go on and on like that. As always, you can put in debug statements if you wanna see how the thing executes at, at every step. I used to like to do that a lot when I was new, just to, I don't know, it, it helped th things, help me visualize things better. So that said, let's go back and make a queue. So there is a queue class in C-sharp. And we will look at that too. Let's go over there. We'll go to the top here. I'm using the generic type. In our case, our generic type will be a node, that node class that they made for us. We know it's a first in, first out FIFO structure. Very good. And you can kind of look through the properties of Q here. We're going to use this count. That's how I'm going to check if it's empty. And then notice we have this in Q and DQ. These will be, we'll also use those to add and remove elements from the Q. I think that's all we need here. But yeah, feel free to read through this if you like to. You're, you're going to be running into queues and stacks a lot, so um, it's, it's worth your time to read these. We'll go back, we'll say queue of type node, right? We're dealing in nodes here. I'll just call mine queue. It's a funny word, isn't it? New queue node. Okay, so we have a queue, very good. And then we saw to start on that wiki page, right? We're gonna add that root node that we have, which is called node to start. We gotta have something in the queue to process, right? So we queue that up. Then they have a while loop, right? And it's just seen while we have elements in the queue. So I said from the queue class, it had this property count. And I'll just say if it's greater than zero, that's my way of saying it's not empty. See how they worded it in pseudocode, Q is not empty. That's not C sharp, so I just kind of translate it to C sharp speak. Okay, so good, we're in here. The first time through, we know we have to pull the next element off the Q. So to do that, I'll say node, I'll just call it, should we call it N equals our Q, DQ, right? That's gonna pop that next, L, the next node from the list, the next person in line, if you will. So there, we have that. Now, at this point, we wanna add it to our result, right? So we could say result, we know lists have an add method, but we're not adding the node, right? The list is of type integer. And if you remember from the node class that they gave us, we know that it has this value property, capital V. So let's say n dot value. And that's gonna put that root value as the first element in our list, which is perfect, right? And then we have the work of checking for children, right? We have to continue this process. If we stopped here, we would just grab the first value, the while loop would end, there'd be no elements left, and it would just give you one value, which is bad. So the other catch that I warned you about is that either the left child or the right child could be missing. So let's check for those. We saw from the node class and left. I'll say if it's not equal to null, that means there is a left child, then we'll add it to the queue. And I'm doing left first because I wanna go from left to right with the processing. So I'll say queue and queue and dot left. And then I'm just going to basically do the same thing on the right side. Right, in this case, we want to add the right node. And so for our next iteration through that while loop, 
Q count will not be zero. It might jump up to two if we have two children. And then their children will eventually get added to the queue. And you can imagine this thing going through and through depending on how big your, your binary tree is. So that's good we handled that. And really there's not much left to do. We, the work that we have to do is done on this line. Result add to our, you know, we're adding the value to our list, which reads very nicely here. So don't forget at the end, we're returning the result, right? So I think that covers us. We'll go ahead and run our tests. Green, that's the ninja's favorite color. That was just the test. Let's do the full attempt. And good, all green. We are ready to submit and collect some points. So congratulations if you got that one right. Um, it's quite likely there are some new concepts here, breadth for search, maybe the queue data structure. Both of those I recommend you look more into. They're, they're not going away. You know what I mean? These are the tools. These are like your hammers and screwdrivers that you're going to use to solve problems. So I wouldn't even think of it like a chore that you have to read about these things. It's like, oh boy, I can read about these things. Like it's a it's an opportunity for you. You know what I mean? It's it's good for you. It's a chance for you to get something. I don't want to use the word a, a cheat, but a tool, you know, something that's going to work for you. That you, you don't have to write a cue every time you have a problem like this. So yeah, that's breath first search as well. You will encounter that again, I promise, in depth first search too. So as usual, hit me up with any questions. Otherwise, I will move on to another challenge. I'm going to submit this and collect my points. And then, as usual, feel free to look through the other solutions that people have as well. Ooh, new privilege. 500 plus honor, wow. To moderate comments marked as hell. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys and gals. Thanks.